Welcome back to the Tech Shack to another low quality video. We got a couple of switches in the shop. Now this switch belongs to Jeffy. We're setting up his new home lab and his new um, tiny house, linking his tiny house back to the family's main house on the farm property with CPEs for internet. He's gonna have multi-gig. And we went with a very big CPE that did over 800 megabits just so that his parents have good access back to his Plex server and his NAS like a good boy. So he's gonna have this deployed in his house along with a smaller 10 gigabit switch. I was setting everything up in the shop. His house isn't done yet, but we got the CPEs up. And he let me keep this for this video because I like this switch so much, I went and ordered an eight port for myself. And let me get this out of the way now. Yes, I run um, mostly unmanaged switches in my network. And why? Because the house and the shop is linked with CPEs and everything in the house is wireless. And anything that's put on my network that's not trusted is put on a, on a segregated wireless network. I have four virtual access points with four virtual wireless networks. So with different levels of um, segregation and, and privileges. So I do all my VLANs basically wirelessly. So if it's plugged into my network, it's a trusted device. It, that's just simpler that way. Um, if you don't like that setup, then please be mad for both of us because I don't care. Um, now this has been a fantastic switch. I took everything down for the purpose of this video and I have a one gig switch running my network right now. So this guy has been running my entire network. I even put my CPE that normally runs through the gigabit switch um, on here because even though the house is only linked back with CPEs and the house's CPE is only able to get 100 megabit, I still with the children home um, on the interwebs playing their video games, I have one access point in the house that's getting 65 gigabytes a day right now. So I figured might as well like put as much stress on the switch as I can. Um, speaking of, of stress, these switches both have a 50 gigabit switching capacity, which is actually fantastic, which is better than some micro tick switches in the same like um, class as far as ports go. Definitely not the same class as far as specs and like managed abilities, but 50 gigabits is pretty impressive in a budget switch like this. The switch that this 8 port is replacing has been my trusty TP-Link 5 port with 25 gigabit switching capacity. Same uh, 12 volt 1 amp power supply. But this was a $300 switch. It's already been RMA'd once through TP-Link. Their, their warranty is great. Um, but it's been swapped out once before. This was a $300 switch new. It's still $139. So for the price of this switch, you could buy two of these switches and one of these switches. This switch is like $40. This switch was $62 ship tax all in. So yeah, what's the negatives? Well, the bottom here, if you look, this is not a real FCC license, FCC info. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Serve the Home does videos on some of these like off-brand switches, especially the ones that you buy right through AliExpress. Like you really don't have anything to worry about as far as FCC stuff. That just means that it's not like imported through the proper channels. That also means like exchanging it through the real manufacturer in China is probably going to be impossible. Amazon listing, the manufacturer, it's their official store and all, the manufacturer actually in the US like all matches like the branding so this might not necessarily be a rebranded switch and that might be the legitimate store and they might have a great warranty like right now the the reviews are great so and nobody's had any negative service but it's like a new brand a new store a new product so i don't know it's not like a time-tested brand so who knows what happens in the future so your warranty is probably the only trepidation i would have now some of the negative reviews pointed to the 10 gigabit port the 10 gigabit port will only work um with fiber modules now most people are going to be like duh like it's it's fanless it's small and it only has a one amp power supply of course you can't run a DAC with it right but to be fair to a lot of the negative reviews the um nothing in the description said you had to run fiber modules now if you paid attention to the pictures and you knew anything about switches like even more expensive micro tick switches with the similar power consumption and similar port configuration are going to have heat and power issues with DAX. They're not going to work like duh. But you know, if you're new, especially new to 10 gig, like you, you're not going to know that intuitively. What good is a 10 gigabit unmanaged switch like this? Well, a lot of good, something like this, like say you're someone like me and you have your server rack in your office in a separate building and CPEs and wireless isn't fast enough. You don't want to bury copper. You're going to want to bury fiber anyway. So you have 10 gig, or more out in your server rack 
and you link that up and you have this like you know on your desk or under your desk and then you have your 10 gigabit uplink back to your main server you have 10 gigabit for your main workstation and then you have a bunch of two and a half gig ports available um, and then like something like this you could put in your utility closet with a 10 gigabit link back to your main server rack and then all of your um, ports in your house are two and a half gigabit um, now my application is I'm going to run my new server that we're putting together soon if this AliExpress motherboard would ever show up and it just cleared customs so it should be here in a couple of days we run that 10 gig and everything else two and a half gig so there is a lot of potential in these if you don't need a managed switch and compared to something like this that was $300 brand new and still $130 right now like the only complaint I have with this switch uh, um, indication light and the activity lights and just about every multi gig switch your fastest speed is is a green light well in this one your 10 gig and your two and a half gig are red indicators or orange amber indicators um, green is um, gigabit and 100 megabit which is backwards but that's literally my only complaint with this. Um, it gets 100% the home lab approval and a little iffy with the warranty thing and really iffy with like the business class approval. But again, that, you know, time might prove me wrong. And that being said, this is gonna go into my back of my server shelf that we're gonna serve 99% of my network. And we'll visit this back in six months and see if it's still going, if it died. Basically, if you don't see another video on this for a while, it's still going. As soon as it dies, you will know. But that All right, so editing me here back, because I was putting everything back together, and well, um, the TP-Link 2.5 gig switch decided to fail. I was gonna daisy chain these two together, so everything out here was multi-gig, um, when it just decided it didn't want to boot up, and then after a couple of tries of power cycling it, powered on, but then I was having negotiation issues, and you know, they, intermittently it's been having negotiation issues at two and a half gig with some of these cheaper cables, but I kept blaming the cables and maybe the real tech driver with Windows 11. But no, in fact, this switch has been giving me issues from the beginning. So yeah, even this workbench here that never wanted to negotiate two and a half gig, but other cables like these heavier ones would work when plugged in that port. So I just blame the cable, but no, everything is working fine. So this guy, huh. second one I would have had to exchange out under warranty. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to bother because while I was saying I was having trepidation trusting this unknown brand to run my business, my good old reliable TP link has failed me again. Now, I have deployed thousands, I think, at this point, TP link products, at least hundreds and hundreds between all the access points and all their switches. This is the only one that's ever failed me, this model, but this model has failed me twice. So do I want to exchange it again? I don't know. I mean, I probably will just to keep it on hand, but am I gonna put it back in here? Probably not, because I put my access point on here and even switch jumping, like uh, access point on here, writing to my NAS from my cell phone, all the footage from today's video to my NAS, it wrote faster switch jumping than it did when both were on the same switch. So, <clears throat> I guess that's just, yeah. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I guess it was the perfect timing if it wanted to die. I'm glad it died when the new switch showed up. But I guess that is it for this low quality video. I will see you guys in the next one.